Continuing on in section 2.3, we're going to keep looking at displays of quantitative data. Now here we have a graph of the ages of all the nurses working at Allegiance Health Hospital. So down here we have the ages and over here we have percent. So the question is what type of graph is this? And my answer is that it's a relative frequency ogive. Now you can tell it's a relative frequency because it's talking about percents over here, right? And it's an ogive because it's cumulative, right? It's growing up and up and up and up and up, right? All right, so what are the numbers on the horizontal axis? Those are upper class limits, right? Because an ogive always uses upper class limits. Now, what is the class width? Well, that's the distance between midpoints, the distance between lower class limits, or the distance between upper class limits. So you could take any two of these limits and you could subtract them like 31.9 minus 29.9, which is equal to 2. So your answer is 2. There you have it. All right, now compute the class limits of the fourth class. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so the upper class limit of the fourth class is 25.9. Oops, that's not correct. Hold on, let me back up. We have a fake class right here. Remember that an ogive starts at a fake class, and this one actually is starting at that fake number, whereas this one back here for this relative frequency polygon did not. See how it doesn't start at zero? So we didn't have the fake classes over here, so we didn't have to deal with that when we went to this question about the second class. The second class was just the second number, which is 17.5. But down here in this problem, it did start at zero. It did do the fake class thing. So we're going to have to pay attention to that when we talk about the fourth class because this one didn't really exist. So we got to count one, two, three, four from the fake one. So disregard the fake one at 19 and go 21 is the first one, 23 is the second, 25 is the third, 27 is the fourth. So the upper class limit, so ignore fake class at start, right? Then the fourth class, shoot, do this way, fourth class, upper class limit is equal to 27.9. And don't forget that the class width is equal to 2. We'll need that. Okay, so let's think about this. The fourth class is 27.9 is the upper limit. So great, we've got the upper limit already, but the lower limit we need to figure out. Well, look at the next one below it. The end of the third class, so the end of the third class is equal to 25.9. So that means that the start of the fourth class must be equal to 26. So there are your two numbers right there, 26 and 27.9. So the class limits are 26 to 27.9. And there you have it. All right, now, what is the age range of the oldest nurses at the hospital? Okay, so the oldest we have right here is 55.9 right here. So that means that we have to do that same argument we just said. So the oldest upper class limit is equal to 55.9. Okay, so that's the upper class limit right there. Done. And then we need the lower class limit. So then the lower class, first mean, let me go this way, upper class limit of the class right before is 53.9, and that means that the lower class limit is 54, right? Because you could just go up by just a tenth, right, to get that next lower class. So that means that the age range is 54 to uh, 55.9. One second. There we have it. So 
the age range there would be that last class, but it ends at 55.9 and it starts at 54, which starts right before this one begins, or that one, right after that one ends, sorry. All right, now what percent of nurses are at or below 40 years old? So the closest we get to 40 is 39.9, so right here. So I'm going to go straight up, and there's the dot right there. So I can actually see what it is because I let I actually have the graph here. So if I let my mouse kind of hover over it, I can see, and you can see on the picture right there, maybe it's 48.9%. But of course, you didn't really know that. But you can kind of see it's just a little bit shy of that 50% mark. So you'd guess about 49%. Then 70% of nurses are below what age? All right, so now we take the 70% line, go straight across until you hit the graph, and it's right there. So it's about, and then go down, 45.9, so about 46 or so. And there you have it. All right. Oh, and before I take a take a walk away from this, um, hopefully you might realize what it is you're actually looking at. There's another word for this kind of graph. Um, it's called a well, another two words. It's called a percentile graph. So if you've ever had um, little kids and they've gone to the doctor's office and they'll say, "Well, your child's in the 50th percentile for height or whatever." What they're doing is they're looking at a bigger version of this, and we will run into that again in chapter three. So what you're doing is you're taking the percent and they're going across, or they're taking the child's height and going up and then figuring out what percentage that is, which is far more likely, right? So that's what you're looking at when you're looking at those graphs in a doctor's office. They're called percentile graphs, and that's what an ogive really is, a relative frequency ogive, um, is a really a percentile graph. And that will come back to you in chapter three. All right, so let's do our last graph for section 2.3. We'll talk about our last graph, which is called a time series plot. Now, time series plots are actually really popular in practice. They're a graph where the horizontal axis is time. Um, we prefer these um, to be line graphs. Sometimes they do it in bar charts. I've seen lots of places online that do bar charts to do this, but um, in statistics, we prefer it to be a line graph. But it shows the trends over time, and this is huge. I mean, this is exactly what, if you've ever seen a stock report, that's what they show. They show this trend line, you know, how the stock doing, things like that. What they're showing, showing you is a time series plot. So here we have the incarceration rates in the U.S. Now down here we have time on the x-axis, and over here we have the total inmates in custody in states and the correctional facilities. Or excuse me, in custody of state or federal correctional facilities. Sorry, just to make this a little bit easier to read, it all of a sudden occurred to me that I can change this, um, and I changed the axis just a little bit, so that way the tick marks are actually on the dots, and I went back and did that for these ones just so you can see it just a little bit clearer. Sorry about that, but um, I think it's just a tiny bit easier to read with Excel if you have the, the numbers on the actual tick marks. Okay, so it doesn't really change the graph, though. I mean, it is what it is. It's still these same dots and the same curve. So this is incarceration rates, here's time ticking along down here, and this is the number of inmates that are in those facilities over time. So in 1978, there were around 300,000, 296,000 inmates total in state or federal um, facilities, and in 2010, that number was 1,521,000. So we've multiplied by five the number of inmates we have in that period of time. Um, here's another example. And I got this one from an internet source, and they used a bar graph, so so did I, so you could see how it looks. And sometimes they'll make it so the graphs get close to touching. Usually they don't bother having them touch because it's not technically a histogram, but, you know, they, they might the bars might touch, the bars might not touch. It's not really relevant because it's not really appropriate to draw a bar graph for this, but a lot of people do because the trend looks more distinctive this way. So there you have it. This is, um, by the way, the true number. This is estimated number of occupational hepatitis B infections among U.S. healthcare workers from 1983 to 1999. And you can see that they made huge leaps in the early 90s with um, training and, I imagine, um, treatment for hepatitis B in U.S. healthcare workers. And also, hopefully, you imagine how popular this type of graph is for any organization that wants to study things over time. 
um, obviously big in healthcare, big in business, you know, people want to know what's, what's the trend and these graphs show those trends. All right, we're done with that section. I'll see you back here for section 2.4. Except before I go, I just say I'm going to change this because, of course, when we put in titles, of course, we want them to be appropriately um, capitalized. And usually we want some kind of title over here. So let me just throw in an access title just so you can see. This would be number of workers, right? Which means automatically this is sort of a frequency time plot because you're looking at the number of, but there you go.